One thing I've learned about teaching component did update is that you either need an app that's relatively complex and large in scope, or you have to use an example that's relatively contrived. To keep us focused on just the syntax and the understanding of component did update, I opted for the more contrived example. I've repurposed a little counting app that I've used in a previous lesson in React, and it's still doing its little counting task just fine. It's starting at one and works its way up. Technically, this can also work down into negative numbers, but that's a bug that we're not accounting for quite yet in this program. But the idea is that the program will use the number of our current count to get a person from the Star Wars API. Now, the Star Wars API starts with the person of ID of 1. It doesn't start zero index, which is why I changed our counter to start at 1 instead of the normal zero. You can see when the component first mounts, it calls an internal method here called get Star Wars character. It passes the current value of the count, and the get Star Wars character method takes that count as an ID, makes a fetch request to the Star Wars API using that ID to get the correct person and then sets the state with the character that comes in through the API. I started the character in state as an empty object, and you can see that I made sure we accounted for a blank spot while it's still getting the very first time. I hit refresh, and it's going to say loading for a second while it's loading the data from the API, and then it will switch to Luke Skywalker after it gets the data from the API. So our goal is to use component did update and make it so that every time we change our state count, we can perform another get request to the API to get the next person in the list of people on this API. So that's perfect for component did update because first we update the count, and then based on that updated count, we can make a request out to the API. Now let's start down this path and we're gonna see one little problem with this. First I'll add a component did update lifecycle method. And you know what, I think we'll just take this line and put it down here. That way, anytime the count updates, it will run component did update and it will get the Star Wars character with the new count. Before I save this, I'm going to console log updated. Let's open the console and we will see what happens. So I refresh, it got Skywalker, and then it's, well, it's in an infinite loop updating. So just to stop this from working furiously here, I'm going to comment out my get Star Wars character line. We'll hit refresh. And now it's not inside this infinite loop. Now take a second to think, why is it stuck in an infinite loop when we get the Star Wars character anytime the component updates? In fact, if you need to, you can pause now and read through the code to see if you can figure out why that's happening. Well, the code of get Star Wars character is calling this dot set state. This dot set state is changing state which is therefore updating the component, which is then running component did update and jumping into that loop where it's calling get Star Wars character again. And it turns out it's a relatively common task to update your state whenever your component updates. And so React has given us a way to check whether or not we should be actually updating here. And that's by giving us access to the previous props from the component before it updated and the previous state before the component updated. Remember, this is component did update, which means it has already happened in the past. And by giving us access to the previous props in the previous state, we can compare those to the current props and the current state, which in other words are this.props and this.state, to decide if we really want to call this get Star Wars character function. All this means is I can use this line of code, but I want to make sure that I wrap it inside of a conditional and this condition can specifically say if the previous state.count does not equal the current state.count, then I want you to get the new Star Wars character because our count has changed. However, once we get the Star Wars character and we set our character state, this component did update function will run again, but it will see that the previous state had the same count as this.state and therefore it will not run get Star Wars character again. If at this point in your journey to learn React, you have already come across the use effect method and learned how it allows developers to think in terms of side effects and work in a more declarative way instead of imperative, you might start to see why that's beneficial. 
The code that we're writing here is relatively imperative. We have to manually check if the count on the previous render was different than the count on the current render. Whereas with use effect, you just say, I want you to keep track of count, and if it ever changes, then run the following effect. Anyway, that's a bit of a tangent, and if you haven't used the effect hook yet, don't worry about what I just said. Now, let's go ahead and refresh this. We still have our console log of updated, but we're going to see that it's not running infinitely. And now when I change the number to 2, it does run two times. The first time was because we changed the state of the count, and that did run component did update, which ran our console log. Then it saw that the previous count, which was 1, is not the same as the current count, which is 2, and therefore it ran get Star Wars character with the ID of 2. That took just a minute to get the data from the API. Then that set state and put the new character in our state, which then ran component did update, which ran our console log again. But then it checked if the current count was different than the previous count, and sure enough, it was not. Both of them were the number 2, and therefore it did not get another Star Wars character. All of this, honestly, was kind of a long-winded way to show you that sometimes you might be able to just check component did update without accessing the previous props or previous state, and sometimes your code will depend on previous props or previous state to decide if you should be updating state inside of component did update. And that sets us up now to move on to the last main lifecycle method that we will be talking about, which is the component will unmount lifecycle method. And we'll be doing that in the next lesson.